guys, it's Com B, and yes, I'm on my computer, but there's a good reason for that. It's because Rec Room released in their latest update last night, data tables. So yeah, we're going to be going through data tables. I've been playing around with it a bit today, and a lot of people are excited. It is static inputs, but it is a good way to download information and store it so there's there's a lot of uses and i'm still figuring it out so let me know what you guys use it for or what you're planning to use it for but i'll just give you a brief overview so first let me take out my maker pen and let's get started all right so i just searched in my toolbar for data table and it brings up the circuit. We'll also just bring in all the data table items that are released in beta. So just make sure you have beta enabled in your room settings. And let's go configure the data table. I'll hit edit and you'll see that this new screen pops up. You can add columns. So for example, say we want to start with the player name as our column as a string hit create and we could also create an int uh, integer and call it maybe kills and one more we'll call it death and there'll be the amount of time space so when it dies how many kills they have and their player name so we have our column set up and you could add columns so we'll have two players well, can be, and we'll have little b if I could type. All right, there we go. So next up, I'm just going to make arbitrary numbers for the amount of kills and the amount of death. And obviously we're not doing so well because we've died more than we've killed. That is all set up now. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and I'll, I'll explain to you what this actually does. All right, now that I hit save, I go back to my table and you'll see that I have the all the inputs that I put in. If I go down to this little icon over here, this is another way to input your data. So you could have your schema, which is just basically what kind of inputs you want and what are your columns. And then we have our data. So how is this useful? Well, first of all, we could take this information and break it out into different lists or variables. I'm not going to go do ahead and do that right now, but I'm going to show you how if you have, say, an Excel document or some sort of coding, how do you get that in here and how that will update your data table. All right, one cool bit of information is in this table, you can now add another column for reward, which is really cool because you could create sort of like a make it to midnight type of reward system. In this room, I'll just quickly create a consumable and we'll call this speed, run faster, and It'll be free hit save now i go to my rewards and add a reward and we'll call this i don't know maybe this will be the bronze prize um receive a speed boost will be the description and the contents will be the consumable and We'll have one speed. You could actually reward more than one of an item. And let's create an image. And we'll just use this as the image. <laughs> Don't ask me why. All right. Hit save. Now, if I go back to my data table. And let's see. We want to edit this information. We'll call this reward. And... Now I could select the bronze prize and you can see how it could be interesting. You, of, you know, just had to store some of this information. I'm going to go ahead and remove this for now, but 
I think it will be useful in the future, and I do think that they're working on an entire reward system so that you could incorporate that into your rooms. All right, so now let's go to Excel and create a quick data table. All right, so I'm just in a blank workbook at the moment, and we'll create our table similar to how we did before. So player kills deaths, and we'll have our names and our kill amounts. It'll differ. Maybe we'll be doing a little bit better this time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Now, if I go to my file explorer and I open this Excel file with Visual Studio Code, you'll see that I have all the information that I just inputted. So now if I wanted to, I could copy some of these inputs and go back into Rec Room. Let's remove that column. Yes, and we'll go to our generate data table and we'll unpick that. If I hit generate, you'll see that when I configure the data table again, it'll reflect those numbers. So here we go. So our deaths are now a bit lower, our kills are higher, and it imported all that information. You could also just manually input some of this data as well. So the three way main ways to really input the data is either do it manually, to do it manually in this text box, or to import it and copy and paste the information into the text box. So those are the three ways to use it. Now, what could you do with this data? You could figure out, okay, I want to get a data table with all rows, rows containing. And so this is the data table. You can rename it if you want. I want players and I want, I want to know how many rows have the player column B, right? So now we have column B and it's saying that there's one row with the name column B. You could also get the first row containing Let's see, we'll pick the data table and we'll say we want to get the first row that contains little b. What row is that? And there you go, it's the first row. It starts at zero, remember? So uh, zero would be comp b and row one would be little b. You could also data table read cell. So say I want to know the cell of this table and I want to know the kills, and I want to know the kills for row zero, or if I want to select one where little beast kills. There you go. You can see that the information is easily accessible. This is really just the tip of the iceberg here. There's a ton of stuff you can do with data tables. Let me know in the comments below what you decide to use them for. I personally don't have any use other than tracking maybe rewards for the time being, but I'm sure for those people who use a lot of inputs and less, this is going to be super helpful. That's all I for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the update and I'll see you later.